I mean, it was classic Donald Trump, was it not? Well, Laurie Laird, um, first of all, tell us how significant this victory in Iowa was overnight. Julia, good morning. Uh, it was a slightly better result than Donald Trump would have expected. There was this psychological thing about 50%. Donald Trump exceeded that. But you know what? Let's go on from that. Donald Trump will be in the vote for the Republican primacy, he will be the nominee. Uh, court cases may get in the way, but there isn't a candidate that is even nipping at his heels. So it's fun for us to look at Iowa, and we'll look at New Hampshire next week, and I hope you and I talk about it. Donald Trump will be the nominee. But I think we have to think about what's next. Yeah, that's the key point, isn't it? It's really not up for a debate now. It's one thing what the polls say, it's another thing what the voters say. Now, Iowa may not be specifically representative, but bearing in mind that he, Donald Trump didn't win Iowa in the 2016 uh, uh, you know, primaries that's and courses, point. which I think is very, very telling. And the fact that the scale of victory was Absolutely. so good. They were kind of playing it down, saying, hey, a victory is a victory. He's so far ahead in the polls, but a victory is a victory. But it was bigger than many had expected. This has never happened on this scale at all. Let's talk about the, the second and third place, though, because the polls have shown for quite a long time Nikki Haley has been uh, gaining ground, <laughs> although far behind in second place. However, Ron DeSantis, the, uh, the, the governor of Florida, who had been seen as sort of Trump without, you know, a lot of the Trump side, bad side, downside, that, that, that he actually nipped it into second place. How significant is that for his campaign and hers? It's difficult. And, and, and as you rightly said, Donald Trump did not win Iowa in 2016 and still went on to be president. We love looking at Iowa, and it is an interesting uh, you know, way to assess candidates. Nikki Haley will be disappointed. Without a doubt, DeSantis did better than we thought. DeSantis had the best ground game in Iowa. He visited every one of the 99 counties. He put a lot of money in there. He did very well there. I don't think he will play very well in New Hampshire. But yeah. again, talking we're talking about second place here. Yeah. And we're not even talking about vice presidents, I don't think. So it, it's fun to talk about this. But I think Donald Trump has this sewn up. Yeah, I mean that that's so the thing. What, what are they playing step? for? Because there isn't, you know, there isn't a silver, a silver medal, there isn't a bronze medal. You're either the candidate or you're not the candidate. He's you know, Donald Trump said a week ago or so ago, you know, yeah, he, he knew who his vice president was gonna be, but he wasn't gonna say. I mean, he, he does this sort of game playing quite a lot. Do you think it is remotely possible that he would offer the vice presidential uh, candidacy slot to either Nikki Haley or Ron DeSantis? And if he did, would either of them accept it? Julia, I think it's more likely he would offer it to you, <laughs> honestly. Oh, now that would I don't be think fun. It would be... Yes, but I don't think that he could credibly offer it to either of them. And you remember Vivek Ramaswamy, who had a, a following for a while. Yeah. It was almost as if he was auditioning for vice president, right? Yeah. He didn't, he wasn't going to win this nomination. He has now suspended his campaign. I don't know who Donald Trump's takes as a vice president, I'm not sure it matters. And I think at some point you and I could talk longer about the role of vice president. Yeah. If we look at the Democrats for a little bit, where's Kamala Harris? Well, what is the role of a vice president? Well, it, well, it depends it under, under George W. Bush. I mean, Dick Cheney basically was, was the president. I mean, it depends on that relationship, doesn't it? But again, lots of people were expecting with Joe Biden, he was supposed to be the moderate compromise candidate for the Democrats back in 2020. Um, and, he, you know, and he would be in, you know, Uncle Joe, he was popular, he'd been VP under Obama, Democrats loved him. He didn't offend the sort of the middle unaligned independent voters. Um, and then, and, and the choice of Kamala, and everyone assumed, oh, well, Kamala's going to take over the presidency, you know, probably during his, 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 his supposed time in office. She has even worse approval ratings, quite rightly, than him. I mean, she is appallingly bad. Julia, could, could you pick her out of a lineup? <laughs> I would argue that, the, no, but I would argue that this is the most important vice president yeah. that the US has ever had. Yeah, with such an old And president. we don't know her. We don't know her. We, I, I can't think of what her voice sounds like. Oh, I can hear her voice, it's and that's in... one of the things that I can't abide by. Oh, is that what you... <laughs> but, no, but this is the thing, OK, so 
we're looking at, there's lots of talk. I was chatting with our, 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 my colleague Claire Pearsall earlier about some of the, you know, the uh, commentators are saying the two groups who are really, really happy with that result last night, Trump supporters, but also Joe Biden's uh, team in the White House, because they would rather go up against Donald Trump, a man, you know, who divides the nation, uh, a man with 21 criminal indictments against him. He could be convicted of any of them before November. Um, and, uh, and, and, you know, they'd rather go up against him than Ron DeSantis or Nikki Haley. Nikki Haley, more perhaps moderate appeal. Ron DeSantis has proven he can appeal to Democrats in Florida and has a track record in Florida as well. Um, do you think it is true that they, Joe Biden's team are cheering this morning? Joe Biden has essentially said that. He has said to donors, I may have not run again were it not that I think I have to run against Donald Trump. Yeah. Can he pull it out next time? Honestly, Julia, who knows? I remember being asked to write something about Donald Trump as a presidential candidate in 2015. And I said, no, give me a flash in the pan. You know, American politics has taken a turn yeah. that it, it, it is so confusing, so very difficult to predict. The one thing that I find fascinating is that Joe Biden isn't given a lot of credit. I know this will be controversial here. Whether you like his policies or not, and we could debate whether they are good for the American economy, Joe Biden said he was going to pass a number of bills. He got them through. Yeah. Yet Americans don't like him. Yeah. It's a very interesting thing. Well, isn't he seen very much as, you know, he's, we know he's a career politician. He's been in politics all his life. There's lots of big question marks yes, about um, exactly money that, made yeah. in the Biden exactly family that. related to his work, you know, his son, Hunter Biden. There's also a general feeling, again, that it's sort of, you know, everyone talks a good game to get into office and then they do exactly what they want. They're all beholden to big money. There seems to be this idea that Donald Trump isn't beholden to big money, where he is... For, I mean, just as much as everyone else. I mean, he is part of the swamp. I mean, it's more so. Not... More so. Yeah, exactly. More I mean, so. literally, you know, <laughs> he cut taxes for the richest people in America. But there is this thing. We're asking people like whether they would want welcome a second presidency of Donald Trump or not. And the key thing is, a lot of people say, you know, and Claire Pearsall pointed this out earlier. You know, he, you know, he, you know what you're getting. He ish. Um, you know, he says he's going to do something, and then he does it. You know, he 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 he, he talks about the stuff that people are actually concerned about. A lot of people aren't concerned about climate change and, and trans rights. They're not. They're concerned about the cost of, you know, putting gas in their, their, their car to get to work, the cost of housing, cost of food. They're, they're, they're worried, as I think everyone should be, about the fact that, you know, three million migrants came over, illegal migrants came over the border uh, from Mexico in the last uh, year or so. I mean, America. I mean, these, these, are, these are stories worth talking about, which the Democrats and other Republicans don't want to talk about. Well, I agree with you that Americans do care about immigration and Democrats have to come up with a policy that is something more than Republicans or meaties. The Democrats have not had a coherent immigration plan uh, in, in generations. This is what voters care about. The Democrats do have to come up with something that is yeah. coherent. And this is a, a flaw in the Democrat Democratic campaign. I am, again, fascinated by the fact that the American economy is, by most metrics, in pretty good shape, yet Americans feel insecure. Yeah, but, but Americans are poorer. I mean, the last 20 years, the average American's cost of living has gone down. I mean, you know, that people... But again, I always say this about polit politicians in the UK. People aren't stupid. They know whether they feel poor or not. Uh, Laurie Laird, fascinated to talk to you. I'm sure we will talk more uh, in the future. As you mentioned, New Hampshire... Uh, Always a pleasure, next, next week, but again, that's where Nikki Haley is more likely to be better. But we shall see what happens. Uh, thank you very much indeed forward. for joining us. Thank you. Um, come back to Claire Pearsall in the studio. Um, this is the thing. I mean, we played those clips of uh, Donald Trump. I mean, I, I, think he's, I think he is both a laughable character, you know, the orange man... Mm -hmm. He, you know, push button issues. I think he is a misogynist. I think he is racist. I think these things are, I think he's a liar. I think he's an anti democrat I mean, I think, I, I think he's authoritarian. I think all these things. But I also completely understand why people would vote for him because the f abject failures of both the Republicans' you know, normal brigade, you know, uh, and they're pretty, they're not that normal, and the Democrats. I think they're Democrats. I think they've abjectly failed. Do you get why people would vote for Donald Trump? Yeah, absolutely. The man is also isn't stupid. And the, it was interesting, those clips that you showed was when he went off to the fire station to deliver pizza to the yeah. fire officers there, wearing a white hat, 
Now, it's one of these really small details that I think that nobody perhaps recognised at the time. Normally, he goes out there with his red MAGA hat yeah. and, and wears it proud, but this was white because the fire chief wears a white helmet. So he's putting himself in with the he's, fire chief, in with the workers. Things, yeah. And it is those subtle little things which make a difference to Americans because they think, well, he's one of us. He's one again, of our people. Again, I'm just not entirely sure that, you know, the, the media, political elite telling everyone who votes, you know, tens and tens and tens and tens of millions of people to vote for this guy, that they're stupid. Same thing with Brexit. You know, we were told we were, we yeah. were racist. But again, I, you know, I think you can, I think you can have criticisms and valid criticisms of Donald Trump, but still think, yeah, I can see why people are going, you know what? So it's still not as bad as the opposition. Don't you think that's why politicians fall down in this country? Because yep. they tell the public that they're stupid and they don't know what they're yep. talking about. Yeah, we're not, funny enough, not keen on that. Well,